So, recall that uh, in the previous lecture we defined uh, dissipativity of an operator uh, of an operator. So, first we define this for an operator in a Hilbert space and then by introducing a semi inner product in a general Banach space, uh, we can also define this dissipativity uh, in a for an operator in a Banach space. Okay. So, before coming to uh, the Lumer Phillips theorem, so here are some simple exercises. So, it is So, you should uh, carefully go through the hypothesis of Hilyoshida theorem and you see these things very clearly. Okay. So, if an operator A, A and minus A both generate semi groups. Uh, semi groups, then A actually generates A generates a group. Okay. So, this I write as T T now T is in R. Okay. So, again you can now state the hypothesis of the Hilyoshida theorem. Uh, so, I just a densely defined close operator Uh, A generates uh, a group. So, Hilyoshida theorem it is check uh, conditions for the uh, semi group. So, now I we can reformulate that generates a group if and only if the resolvent estimates. So, R lambda A to the power K less than or equal to M divided by mod lambda minus omega to the power K uh, for K equal to 1 to etcetera and mod lambda bigger than where m bigger than or equal to 1 and omega now non negative uh, <coughs> are constants. So, again as we did in the previous case, so you can take m equal to 1 and omega equal to 0 and then you write down the conditions for A to generate a contraction group now. Okay. So, just write down resolvent estimates, Est write down estimates for a to generate a contraction semi group. As I said earlier, so most of the semi groups we come across uh, 
while studying heat wave and Schrodinger equation they are all contraction semi group or contraction groups and in some cases they are also unitary that is stronger than this contraction I will come to that. Okay. So, before stating uh, uh, Lumer Phillips theorem, so one more definition. Okay. Uh, <coughs> a an operator A uh, A in a Banach space X. is m dissipative okay m for maximal so i leave it to you uh, what is that maximal is with respect to okay so to find out that if a is dissipative and so this image of i minus a is x ok. So, Again, let me recall what this dissipativity is. So, this is real part of A x x less than or equal to 0 for all x in D. Okay. So, this condition can be replaced by anything uh, some lambda lambda i minus a you will see that for some lambda positive that is sufficient. So, in applications you need not always look for the identity, but some convenient lambda positive ok. So, here is the theorem. Uh, okay. Let me just <coughs> so this is Lumer Phillips. Okay. An operator, uh, okay. a densely defined operator, a densely defined. So, actually there is no assumption of closeness densely defined operator A in X generates uh, a contraction semi group. semi group if and only if A is M dissipating. So, like I commented in the previous lecture you should <coughs> see the beauty of analysis in reducing the complicated hypothesis in Hill-Yoshida theorem to a very simple verifiable condition. Okay. So, here in this theorem you see you do not see any uh, resolvent estimate. Okay. So, only resolvent estimate might be seen only through this uh, range condition. Okay. 
otherwise you just you know that dissipativity again is just an algebraic condition and this is with respect to any semi inner product okay so that's that you should bear in mind with respect to any Uh, semi inner product and we already seen that we can introduce a semi inner product in any Banach space. Okay, so, that is why this <coughs> uh, okay, a proof is not very difficult. So, just let me indicate that. Okay, so Uh, this of course, uh, again uh, follows from the Hilyoshida theorem, okay. so two parts. So, suppose uh, A generates a contraction semi group a semi group. Then we already know that this norm of lambda or lambda a is less than or equal to 1 for all lambda positive. So, in particular I can take lambda equal to 1 and that proves the image of i minus a equal to x. Okay. So, that is uh, one part is very very easy. Okay. The second part suppose A is densely defined and A is uh, M dissipative. Okay. So, dissipativity may not imply closeness but the m dissipativity okay so as an exercise so that implies a is closed so because this is an important part of the hypothesis in close uh, in heliocida theorem so i just leave it uh, as an exercise okay so you you the second part of the hypothesis that m dissipativity plus that image condition and that will imply this uh, exercise. So, we will do a small computation here. So, let lambda be positive. So, I want to <coughs> compute this. So, this uh, lambda norm x square Okay, then for x in d a I want to do that. So, this is uh, the property of the semi inner product okay. and this I write it as less than or equal to lambda x x plus real part of uh, minus real part of a x x. Okay. Because real part of a x x is non-negative, so I am taking negative sign here. So, that is a positive quantity, non-negative quantity. So, I can add that. So, this becomes lambda i minus a x x. Of course, I can put real part here, no problem. Okay. So, this again property of the uh, semi inner product and finally, you get that lambda i minus a x to x. Okay. 
So, that implies so this this is one important estimate. So, let me just and this holds true for all x in d a and uh, lambda positive. Okay. A small remark here this condition in many textbooks uh, is defined as accretive operator. So, A is called an accretive operator and then for M accretive you include uh, that image condition. Okay. So, you can actually start from this if you like, but now we have this dissipativity comes naturally in many applications and from dissipativity we are deriving this accretive condition. Okay. So, the an operator A is called accretive if this condition. Uh, so, just uh, as a uh, so different textbooks may use different terminology. So, you just look at the definition and proceed. Okay. So, this dissipativity and accretivity may be <coughs> used interchangeably. Okay. And since A is closed, so this immediately see that image of uh, lambda i minus A is also closed because A is closed. Okay, so, that is uh, so, but the hypothesis say that at least in one case that is so that is why it is sufficient to assume for any one lambda that image is exactly equal to x. Okay. So, but uh, we are given this image i minus a is x and with the above estimate we see that this i minus a uh, is invertible 1 1 on 2. Okay. Let me write that 1 1 on 2 and the inverse also this r 1 a. Let me write that is less than equal to So, that means, this one belongs to the resolvent of A. Okay. So, this all exercise what we did is to conclude that one belongs to rho A, but rho A is open, rho A is open. Okay. So, as a side remark may be I will make it uh, for a general uh, <coughs> okay, if uh, T is invertible and norm of S yes, uh, is less than norm of T inverse whole power inverse then. So, this is again simple uh, fact you learn in operator theory. So, this S plus or minus T is also invertible and that is how you prove that rho A is open okay. is invertible. Okay. So, from here if you now take any lambda, so lambda minus i a you just write that lambda minus 1 i plus i minus a okay. that I know that this is invertible we have just now proved. 
So, this implies if mod lambda minus 1 is less than 1, then lambda also belongs to rho a and again a simple estimate and mod lambda. Uh, we have introduced that notation. So, that is 1 by lambda. Okay. But just look at here this mod lambda minus 1 less than 1. So, you just take the positive lambda here. So, 1 is sitting here and now you go up to 2 and now you repeat this process and conclude that. So, this lambda positive is in rho a and r lambda a uh, is less than 1 by lambda. And now, you appeal to Helio-Sheda theorem. Okay, all the resolvent estimates are here. So, you say that A generates uh, A contraction semicolon. Okay. So, you just missed one thing, let me just recall that. Uh, okay. This uh, generation is fine. Uh, suppose a this uh, dissipativity. Okay. So, we have to uh, just see that. Okay. So, here uh, where is that m dissipativity ok that is fine, but here this ok if T T is the semi group uh, we have to show that uh, A is dissipative. So, that is missing here in just let me just uh, say that dissipative ok. So, I will just continue that little bit ok. So, proof of uh, dissipativity in part 1. Okay. So, we know that A generates a contraction semicolon. A contraction T. Let me write that T T. Okay. Now, you consider to see the dissipativity, you consider this T T x uh, minus x x. Okay. So, you semi inner product and you take the real part and this is again using the uh, <coughs> property of semi inner product. So, T T x x minus norm x square okay. and this is less than or equal to real part of this thing is less than or equal to absolute value and then the whole thing. So, you do that. So, T T x uh, norm x minus norm x square. 
but T t is a contraction. So, it is all norm t's are less than or equal to 1. So, that is less than or equal to 0. So, this is true for all x in x. So, in particular if you take x in d a, so you divide by t and you take uh, as t tends to 0. So, divide by t positive and let t goes to 0. So, you conclude that real part of a x x is less than or equal to 0 for all x in d. Okay. <coughs> so, now we come to one important theorem. So, just let me just So, this is called Stone's theorem. This uh, was proved many years before this Heliocena theorem uh, theory was discovered using the uh, spectral theory for self adjoint operators in a Hilbert space. Now, the setup is in Hilbert space. So, let uh, H be a Hilbert space, because we are going to use the adjoint of the operator. So, we need uh, a Hilbert space. Okay. An operator A generates a unitary group unitary group u t. So, let me write that t belonging to r if and only if a is skew adjoint. that is set joint is just recall that this equality means uh, d a star the domain of definition of a star is same as d a domain of a and domain of minus a domain of a. So, a star x is equal to minus a x for all x in d. Okay. So, since we are dealing with unbounded operators, this has to be borne in mind. Okay. So, again let me just sketch this proof, it is all hidden there. So, this unitary means, okay. so let me just and this is particularly useful the Stone's theorem for dealing with wave equations and Schrodinger equations, where we expect uh, a unitary group to be generated. So, unitary means this u of minus t is same as u of t inverse and this is where the unitary comes. So, this is just u star t. Okay. So, this is unitary. Uh, so, yeah. The, so, one part suppose the A is q adjoint. So, let me just suppose A is q adjoint. And now, since we are working in Hilbert space, so you can easily check that A is uh, dissipating. Okay. 
Okay, so that is just in fact a real part of this inner product A x x is 0. Okay, so, you can easily check that and again it is the property of the uh, shell bent operators and now uh, okay, this if we put B is equal to I A i is square root of minus 1 and that implies b is b star. Okay. So, just by multiplying by this i you see that. Uh, <coughs> so, for a self adjoint operator for a self adjoint operator uh, b this uh, this complex plane lambda lambda in C such that imaginary lambda is positive is in the rho B and we have this lambda I okay, rho not rho R R lambda B is less than or equal to 1 by lambda. Okay. So, now you translate that uh, to this Q adjoint operator A. So, you see that. So, lambda real lambda non zero this is in rho a and r lambda a is less than or equal to mod lambda inverse for all lambda real non and from there you just conclude that. So, in fact, A and minus A they generate uh, contraction semi groups and from there again using the earlier exercise you see that A generates a unitary. Okay. So, conclude Okay, few more steps conclude that A generates a unitary group. Converse is almost trivial, so converse. Okay, so suppose U T is a Uh, unitary group so then that means norm of u t is 1 for all t equal to 1 so again you apply appeal to helioshida theorem little more work but uh, what uh, is important to show is that a is q adjoint but then, then okay, unitary group. Okay, so use unitary to see that the generator. Just write down the definition of the generator, and use this uh, unitary property of the group to see that A is skewed agent. Appeal to Hiliyoshida. etc to conclude A is Q H y. Little work, okay, but that can be done. Okay, so, with that thing we just come to end of this 
more or less discussion of semi group theory. Uh, from next class onwards, we take up abstract Cauchy problem and then go to uh, particular equations of heat, heat uh, wave and Schrodinger. Thank you.